From AP News, the Associated Press, Minneapolis Council puts plan to abolish police in motion. The Minneapolis City Council votes Friday on a proposal to change the city charter to allow elimination of the city's police department, a radical move supported by a majority of the council after George Floyd's death, but far from assured. The vote is one step in a process that faces significant bureaucratic obstacles to make the November ballot, where the city's voters would have the final say. And it comes amid a spate of recent shootings in Minnesota's largest city that have heightened many citizens' concerns about talk of dismantling the department. Now, and you, you think about this. If you look, look at all the history of dirty policing in America. If you haven't seen the movie Serpico, go watch Serpico. If, if you don't want to watch the movie, just read up, read up on on the story of, of Frank Serpico, NYPD uh, d- detective. You look at all of the drug rackets, all of the false arrests, all every, all of the careless murders like George Floyd. And if you're a cop, if you're, think, just put yourself in their shoes for a second. Oh crap, we went too far with the George Floyd thing. People are so upset. They might defund us, they might abolish this whole department. Because they're afraid, because because it looks like the cops killed someone. Oh, because well, because we did, I guess. You know, all right. Well, how do how do we turn this around? How do we how do we make them remember that they need us? Remember, like that line from the uh, v, for v for Vendetta, right? Um, Chancellor Adam Sutler, make them remember why they need us. Well. This is a really easy one. Go out and make make the people seem more violent than the police, right? You think you think cops who have murdered who would murder? Oh, let's let's put it like this. Do you think that cops who would murder innocent people for fun wouldn't murder innocent people to keep their jobs where they're allowed to murder innocent people for fun? Yeah. No shite. Really? That's it. You know, and, and you go, oh, there a spate of recent shootings in Minnesota's largest city that have heightened many citizens' concerns about talk of dismantling the department. Oh, well, it worked. And it wouldn't work if people had a libertarian sensible perspective on this and could understand that even their excuses for more police don't justify them. It's not like those shootings were stopped. It's not like there was a spate of shootings that police intervened in. The shootings happened anyway. And why? Why do those shootings happen? Right? What are the causes of Violence, just in in human beings in general. Anger, desperation, need. Mostly need, mostly depravity. It it comes from, from some unmet need of theirs. And we're capable of meeting people's needs many times over, certainly in America, if not the world. We're capable of food, water, clothing, shelter, energy, entertainment, information, data. For everybody on this planet, several times over, no one has to live in poverty anymore. Nobody has to live in this kind of desperation that leads to this kind of conflict. Why do we have this kind of conflict? Why do we have this need in the first place? Because government and people complain about libertarians and you know being too too oriented on, on economics and money. Well, yeah, because if you do take away our ability to take care of each other, this is what happens. How much of this violence is based on the war on drugs made possible by gun control? How much of it is a a product of of the welfare state and economic controls? And right now we're seeing it come to the surface because the economic suppression is at a new level with the forced unemployment crisis that we're in. 
So now, am I saying that the cops, you know, infiltrated the protest groups and and you know made these shootings happen? Well, yeah, it's it's possible. Unlikely, because they didn't really need to. They could have just let it happen on purpose. You know, they could have just stayed out of the way of uh, and 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 poked it into happening. I don't know. Made it happen very subtly. Doesn't matter though. Because when it's make them remember why they need us. It's not even the local cops on the beat. It's the politicians. Who have created this whole situation very deliberately. And if anything until like I'm, I'm really glad that this conversation is happening. Right now that, you know, not only are we talking about coronavirus, hey, let's talk about police brutality, too. And by talking about coronavirus, I mean, of course, all the ways the government is using it as an excuse to screw everybody over. But okay, we'll talk about how cops are doing the same thing, how the police state is bad. And calling attention to this and going, hey, let's talk about ways that, you know, we could get along better without police, with community-based restorative justice, with private security with community-based policing, with with police accountable only to their cities, with localization of control, all of these things, great. Absolutely. You know, where this is going, I don't know. More people are considering a world without government policing. And that's, that's a huge step in the right direction. That moves the ball forward. But in terms of where we are right now, how strong the establishment is, their ability to say, make them remember why they need us, is still overwhelming. And in this episode, what's the impact? A reaffirmation of the fact that we need police in America. We really need, I mean, because look, and, and for years now, the establishment is going to get to say, remember that time we considered getting rid of the police? Remember after George Floyd and police in our city kind of stepped back, you know, here in Minneapolis, things got worse. Look at all the shootings. And then you go, well, Chicago, New York, same thing. And then you step back and go, wait, where, where are these, where are these violent areas? And, oh, they're in cities where there's a lot of police already, where the drug war a product of government policy is rampant. Now, we are in a time of significant reform where in order to distract from the coronavirus ripoff, the establishment has to at least go, all right, well, we'll give you some police reforms. If you're, if you'll stay distracted, if you'll make enough noise, Hey guys, like here's the carrot, right? You know, while we're ripping you off with coronavirus and radically reforming society, so that the rich get richer faster than ever before while the poor get poorer. You know, hey, here's the carrot. If you guys make enough noise, we'll, we'll give you some police reform. Oh, okay, we'll make noise about that, and we'll ignore the corona economic ripoff. And and we're in this process now, seeing how much can we take in police reform in order for them to get that distraction effect? You know, I say, wait, it's Let's take as much as we can. It's still a very exciting opportunity. And it's the product of this, you know, pressure that's been building up for police reform over the years. All these demands for protection against qualified immunity or ending of qualified immunity police, demilitarization. These are overdue reforms that the establishment has been kind of holding on. All right, well, you know, we'll give these out when we, we absolutely have to. There's obviously more to this. If there is enough noise made, we might get the ball rolling on attention to police reform that really licks the whole problem that eventually solves the economic problem as well. Because remember, if these police weren't enforcers of tax law, the whole racket falls apart. I know most police don't do that. but IRS agents only have to conduct a few audits to get most people to comply. 
and not complying and going along with this is the most important thing. I'm very excited by the possibility of a city like Minneapolis that is now the epicenter of this issue for the United States right now of police reform and police brutality and racism. I'm very excited by the possibility that they're going to take a major step in reforming their police force. Reality is a lot more incremental and we can still celebrate the small victories like this. We'll be following up on this story.